Ooh, get excited, everybody, because today we're talking baseball. Indians baseball, we're talking tribe. Believe it or not, there was a period of time where we were a halfway decent baseball town. We were the baseball town. All started in 1994 when the, the Jake opened up. The Cleveland Indians left the punch palace that was Cleveland Municipal Stadium and moved into our shiny new digs in the corner of Carnegie, Ontario. The magic started early. The 94 season was kind of like a low key coming out party for the tribe. They're a homegrown team. Uh, the season was shortened by a strike though. So they only played uh, up until August. Uh, they ended up finishing about a game behind the White Sox and actually first place in the wild card. The player strike bled in to 1995. It actually shortened the season about 18 games. But as soon as that season started up, that tribe team exploded. That season, the Indians went 144. 100 wins, 44 losses. That is bananas. And they did it in style too. They led the American League in just about every offensive category. They had 12 walk-off wins. They were 13 and 0 in extra innings. They had 48 come from behind victories. They had 27 wins in the final at bat, and they won the AL Central by 30 games. That lineup was a murderer's row. The stuff of absolute legend. So much fun to watch. Out of all the players that got 200 at bats or more, the only players that hit under 300 were Paul Sorrento, Tony Pena, who I'm pretty sure was actually like 76 during that season, and Omar. But who cares if Omar only hit 260 that season, which is not terrible. Omar provided the best defensive play that you are going to find in baseball, that you'll ever find in baseball. Omar is the greatest defensive shortstop, probably the best defensive player to ever play the game. I don't give a shit what you say about Ozzy Smith. No, I never saw Ozzy Smith play. Maybe it's the homer in me, but I don't give a shit. It does not get better than Omar Vizquel. I watched the games. Omar was a Venezuelan swan out there. It was a damn ballet and a pleasure to watch it. Omar Vizquel deserves to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. The fact that he's still waiting to get into the Hall of Fame is a crime against humanity. I watched the games. Anybody who says that he, he's not, that he was just defense, and that his defense was just very, very good and not the best, you're wrong. You did not watch the games. And I feel bad for you for missing those games. Also, go f yourself. The team didn't need Omar to hit. Everybody else hit. That team, that lineup was more stacked than a slime and sandwich. It was beautiful. You had a young Jim Tomey with that Illinois farm boy strength and the socks pulled up all high, the pants rolled up, molesting himself in the batter's box, yoking 25 taters. You got another 25 out of Paul Sereno. You got 21 out of Eddie Murray. 21 home runs out of a 39-year-old Eddie Murray. On top of that, he hit 323 as an everyday DH. That's insanity. He's a 500 home run hitter. He's got 3,000 hits out there looking like a jacked Carl Winslow. Yet Kenny Lofton hitting like Mays, running like Hayes. He was a real life Willie Mays Hayes. I love that guy. He hit over 300, he stole 54 bases, robbing home runs in center field. Brings a smile to my face every time I think of it. Carlos Baerga, Carlos Baerga, two-time silver slugger Carlos Baerga. Second baseman with a little bit of power. Love me some Carlos Baerga. He's actually the only player of those teams that I've met in person. I severely creeped him out on two separate occasions. A young Manny Ramirez, the baby bull Manny Ramirez, adding another 31 homers to that team, hitting over 100 RBIs, Manny being Manny. <laughs> Manny being Manny is hilarious. It's just code for being a lovable moron and kind of a d knocking that that extra inning home run that walk off home run off of Dennis Eckersley one of the best closers in the history of the game Manny knocked it like 460 feet into the bleachers and you can just see Dennis Eckersley mouth the word wow because that kid was just built to bash the shit out of that ball last but not least there was Albert Bell and Albert Bell in 1995 was the first player in baseball history, and still the only one to do it, uh, to hit 50 home runs and 50 doubles in one season. The guy does that. He leads the American League in home runs, in doubles, 
in slugging percentage, in RBIs, in total bases, and he still doesn't win the MVP just because he was that big of an that even though his numbers were undeniably better than everybody else's, he still lost from being a Albert Bell corked his bats, he yelled at teammates, he yelled at fans, he yelled at reporters, he threw baseballs at fans and reporters, he would smash the clubhouse up with his bat. He would smash team property, visiting team's property, his teammates property, just destroy shit with bats. He even chased down some kids in his car after they egged his house in Euclid, which is like, Euclid, what the did you expect? So good, but such a Hell, it's hard not to spend all my time on the lineup. Hell, I, I spend so much time on the lineup that it, I really don't even have time to talk about the pitching. I mean, you had a, a, a 42-year-old El Presidente, a 36-year-old Bulldog holding things down in the starting rotation. Uh, Julian Tavares and an otherworldly season from Joey Tables, a.k.a. Jose Mesa from that year. You can't hold 97 against him in 95. I won't talk too much about him, but the guy killed it in 1995. In the end, the Indians swept the Red Sox in the, uh, the first round of the playoffs. Second round, beat the, a stacked, stacked Mariners team in six games. And then an unstoppable force, unfortunately, met an immovable object. Maddox, Glavin, Smoltz, Wohlers, David Justice, Crime Dog McGriff, Chipper Jones just ended up being too much. Just kind of ran out of gas. That pitching was just untouchable. They were f***ing good. And it hurts a little bit extra to lose to a guy named Chipper. F***ing Chipper, really? You You can go by the name Chipper. We gotta lose to a Chipper. No matter what, that was probably the most unforgettable summer of my childhood. Those are some of the finest memories of my entire childhood with the 1995 Cleveland Indians. I don't think a baseball team has ever been that much fun to watch. Uh, Kenny Lofton, uh, Albert Bell when he wasn't being an <laughs> Manny Ramirez being an idiot, Jim Tomey and that dumbass farm boy strength, the bubblegum bubbles on top of the hats. It was, it was just a great year of baseball, uh, especially for a city that had just lost the beloved football team. That team stepped in and filled this enormous void that just couldn't have been filled any better. Um, except for maybe that 97 team, but that's a conversation for another day. With that, go Tribe.